Today we'll take a look at how I've been making lithium ion battery packs with individual 18650 cells from eBay. These cells are much cheaper than buying pre-made packs and offer a lot longer flight time than some of my aircraft. The first pack we're going to make today is for this little mini AR wing, a 4-cell flat pack style. Before we get started, this is my GitHub repository for all my drone settings. In it is a folder for battery stuff. In that, you'll find this handy little diagram for 4-cell lithium-ion packs. We're going to use this diagram for our flat pack as well as our square pack coming later in the video. To the bin, where I have some 18650 cells already, different capacities. We're going to use 3000 milliamp hour ones today and a balance lead. So to get started, I lay things out on the bench, see what I'm up against, make sure I get the polarities right. Then you can use a little bit of hot glue to stick the cells together. This is my spot welder I purchased from Amazon for just this job to make these uh, lithium ion packs. You don't have to purchase a spot welder, you can solder wires directly to the batteries, no problems, but you do run the risk of overheating them. And if you overheat one, well, you could set it off and have it do a bit of a thermal runaway. Hence, the spot welder is the way to go if you've got the money to buy one. Mine came with this nifty little tray, but you could definitely 3D print one as well. It makes it a lot easier for holding the cells in place, and then you don't need the hot glue that we did earlier. If you're a maker or electronics enthusiast, make sure you check out PCBWay. They can make any circuit board you desire, provide the parts, and even assemble the board for you. They now offer fully transparent tracking on your order so you can see where your project is at from start to finish. Your settings are going to vary depending on your spot welder. In my case, it's about 70%-ish depending on the cells. Just try it out on some used cells if you have them. You want to get the maximum amount of adherence with the minimum amount of heat. Lay your nickel strips in place as per your wiring schematic and go ahead and press up on the batteries until you get a bit of tension and then activate your foot pedal. Easy peasy, nothing to it. Rinse and repeat. The number of welds that you put on is entirely up to you. Mine, I have lots of room for about six contact points, so three activations. That seems about right to me and what I've seen on some commercial units, but again, it's personal preference. Once we've got everything all set and welded together, and then we're going to need to do our balance lead and our main power wires. Now, don't make the mistake I did here in this footage whereby I had the balance lead upside down compared to the schematic. This is no problem to correct later just by moving the wires between the pins. I solder up the wires to the XT60 connector, join the wires onto the pack, nothing to it. If you use the correct size of heat shrink for your wires, as I do here, you can slide the heat shrink right up inside the XT60 connector before you shrink it. That way you have a wonderful seal. Tin the other end of our wires, tin the ends of our batteries as well, and then go ahead and join them up. It's a fight against the God. Quick check with the meter and we are good to go. On to the balance lead. In my case, I'm using these pre-made ones. We're gonna have two wires that are gonna be kind of extra long to go down to the bottom of the battery and the rest will remain at the top. Solder them on, same thing as before. Use a minimum amount of heat you can and if you can, solder them onto your nickel strips instead of the battery itself. That way you don't run the risk of overheating the battery any more than necessary. In my case, I lay the wires down inside here and just hit them with a little tiny bit more hot glue. That way they're held in place. A um, little shy on materials right now due to the pandemic. So we're using hot glue and tape in the case of this pack instead of heat shrink and better things. So eh, use what you got. 
We're then left with what resembles on a commercial battery pack. Handy dandy. This thing's going to have 3,000 milliamp hours of capacity. That's three full amp hours at the same size of weight as my 1,300 milliamp hour lipo packs. Pretty cool. Again, not as much uh, ampacity we can't deliver. As there's no C rating comparison between the two, but this will do the job on my low amp planes just perfectly. Here's another pack. This is the 2x2 configuration, a square configuration, much similar to my LiPos. This is for my Nano Talon aircraft, and the process is exactly the same. Go ahead and assemble the cells, the same connection points, just stack them on top of each other and spot weld them together. Wiring is just the same. Heat shrink up our XT60 and then the two long leads to the bottom of the battery, rest of them to the top. Easy peasy. This one I used a bit of good old hockey tape to hold it together. That's the Canadian in me. <laughs> Works just wonderful. This thing is ready to seal up, ideally with some heat shrink, but unfortunately all I have in this pandemic is electrical tape. Wrap your ends up first and then go around the bulk of the battery. However you want to wrap it is fine as long as you cover all the exposed areas and all your exposed leads. You don't want to have your plane just randomly catch fire. While it may not be the prettiest thing, there's something pretty satisfying about making your own pack and then putting it into service in your very own plane that you made for yourself. I'm really happy with this. This is stretching the limits of this, uh, this little airframe. This is a lot of battery, but according to uh, the iNav posts on Facebook, two other guys have run with more weight than this by about 15 grams, so I should be good to go with this plane. The cool thing is, if I do run into trouble and want to take this down to a 3-cell, I can just cut it apart. No problem whatsoever. Once you've made your own pack and you're familiar with it, then it's not nearly as daunting and you can go ahead and make future one. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, go ahead and click a thumbs up. You can join me on Patreon at the link below or become a channel member right below this video as well. If you've got any tips or tricks or ideas, post them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Good luck and happy flying.